Well, hi everyone, and completing a, a triumvirate of videos of Eureka Entertainment limited edition UK Blu ray box sets of classic Hong Kong films. Uh, now we look at one that uh, came out not so long ago for Jet Li's Once Upon a Chi Time in China trilogy. Although, um, strictly speaking, this box set is more of a quadrilogy because it actually also contains Once Upon a Time in China and America in which he, he actually returned to the role of Wong Fei Hong after a, a short absence and the intervening films between Once Upon a Time in China 3 and Once Upon a Time in China and America he, he, the character was recast with Chu Man Chuk in the role instead so as with the other box sets we've got some um, Box art. Uh, there's, there's the Cantonese title is Wong Fei Hong, which is actually the name of the character that Jet Li plays, and pretty famous person in Chinese f folklore. And 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 he, well, not so much folklore history. Uh, I believe he was a master of the Hungar form of kung fu and. And one of his his well his well known legendary attacks is called the either the shadowless kick or no shadow kick, depending on which source you read. The um, the the, the films were directed by Tui Hark, who would later go on to direct Jean Claude Van Damme in Knock Off and Double Team. So, so there, despite that there are four films, there are three actual Blu-ray cases. And as with the other box sets, you get a little bit uh, on the back about each film and the special Blu-ray edition features. And all, all four of the films have the collector's booklets similar to those in the in the other two box sets I discussed in, re in my two most recent videos. And there's the uh, there's the spine. So now we'll have a look at the discs. So here's the first and here's the one for the first film. You've got Jet Li playing the title role and, and this 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 is probably this film is probably one which brought Jet Li to a wider audience in the West and or otherwise outside of the uh, out of out of Hong, outside of Hong Kong, China, and the like. And other notable guests guest stars include Kent Cheng, who who anyone who's seen the Jackie Chan starring film Crime Story will recognise him as the main antagonist of that film and. Yun Biu is also uh, has a role in, in in this film, and and a, a, an actress called Rosamund Kwan also plays Thirteenth Aunt Peony in in these films as well. So each of the each of the um, Blu-ray cases has the has the outline of the, of the film and what's and the extra bits and bobs that are on the disc. The film came out in 1991, or 29 years ago. Unreal. It's a Region B Blu ray. So. There's the disc itself. And. You can see there's a picture of uh, Wong Fei Hong and his students training on the beach in the background there. I wouldn't say that was a reversible sleeve the way it was for the Police Story and Project A box sets I reviewed previously. Um, and in, inside the, inside the um, collector's booklet, um, got the cast and crew there.
There's some Kent Cheng, Rosamund Kwan, and Yin Biu, whom I'd been reckon, who I'd, I'd mentioned just moments ago. Wu Ma is a regular of a lot of Sammo Hung's films. Shi Qin uh, is probably best known for playing Mr. Han in Enter the Dragon. And there's some Choi Hart, who I mentioned as being the director, and who's also the producer. This first film act, oh, this first film did have yun, choreography by Yun Yun Wo Ping, but as you, you see, Lao Ka Wing actually were, were, did choreograph some of the earlier fights in the film. But I, my understanding is he was let go partway through production. So if you're wondering why the overall feel of the fight scenes changed in elsewhere in the film that's why mm, some shots from the film as with the other um, collector's edition booklets in the other two box sets there's a little bit about the film and how it came to be and so forth and pretty much relaunched a, a sudden interest in period kung fu films after it had fallen out of favor about a decade earlier I think Jackie Chan's Dragon Lord was one of the last ones before it was given a bit of a break for a while. A little bit of viewing notes and production credits and the like. Eureka have done a really good job of, uh, of restoring it, of restoring this film and the other films. Onwards to the second film in the in the set, Once Upon a Time in China 2, which came out the following year, 1992. And if there's one thing that's rare about sequels is when you get one that's uh, quite often deemed superior to the original, but this is definitely one of them. It, it's more cohesive and uh, probably, and I believe, had far fewer production issues than the first film did, e even though... We, Yun Biu um, decided not to be a part of this and was replaced with Max Mok or Mok Su Chun. And um, as ever, a bit of a blurb on the back of that, just like with the first film. Again, no sign of um, a reversible sleeve. Again, just just a different shot of the of Wong Fei Hong's students training on the beach, which also features in the opening credits of the, of the fir first film, and it, and you see bits of it used again in in the second film. Cast and crew again, and um, is Don Yen playing the main antagonist in the film he is brilliant in this film I'm not surprised he became the superstar in more recent times as you probably know Donnie Yen went on to play Yip Man who famously taught Bruce Lee Wing Chun in his earlier days again Toy Hot directed and produced and in this one there's a the, um, the 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 tune that's most famously linked to the character of Wong Fei Hong in, in during the closing credits of this film, it's actually sung by none other than Jackie Chan. There's Jet Li striking a pose. It's quite amazing that uh, that he carried he carried the role so so well, considering um, I, considering I heard that uh, in the, uh, at least initially, he was accused of being too young to play a Sifu. But, uh, but for, for whatever reason, he was deemed to be a uh, ideal casting, and he certainly had the martial arts skills to do it. Even even though the no shadow kick I mentioned earlier was was con was re replaced with, with uh, a series of aerial kicks, whereas um, the hung, the Hungar Kung Fu style, I believe, is the Southern style, which and Southern styles of Kung Fu are not really re renowned for having high kicks in. So it, there was some controversy about that from purists who, who of uh, of Kung Fu and not just Hungar, but pretty much all the Southern Southern fist styles. Another bit about some story about it, 
and the again the occasional way of seeing how different posters marketed is in different parts of the world possibly not quite as extensively as in the other two box sets I reviewed and now we'll have a look at the last case which contains both Once Upon a Time in China 3 and Once Upon a Time in China and America Again, not a reversible sleeve in this. Although it's a different picture from the, from the shots of the students training on the beach this time. And casting crew in the collector's booklet. This time it's got both the films uh, listed out here because they're both in this section. There's a, there's a second disc containing once Upon a Time in China and America and there's the one for the third film so four discs in total despite it being marked as a trilogy although, although um, the first film and especially the second film are considered classics the third one has somewhat divided has somewhat polarized fans of the genre because uh, it seems the third one seems to take more of a, a, a take more of a make make more of the plot device uh, the the traditional lion dancing and it's questionable whether it actually worked so well i mean some of the things they do are still amazing to watch but something about it it just didn't quite work so well it's hard to put your finger on what what put what what exactly is about it that doesn't seem to work it's maybe it's one of those things which you it's it's just got the cert, certain je ne sais quoi that just wasn't there this time around. And uh, once upon a time in China and America is also a bit on the weak side, and uh, it it's not terrible, but it's but then again it's not particularly ideal. And actually ha has Wong Fei Hong suffer from amnesia at one point after he has an has an accident that. As far as I can make out, this box set, like the other two I've reviewed, is also out of print. So, especially as this one's got four films in rather than the two that were in the previous one. If you're intending to try and get hold of it, expect to have to pay um, a pretty high price for, uh, for, uh, for the privilege. Um, the, uh, as I said, said the first and second films in particular are, are really good, pretty, pretty good and uh, and this certainly um, rank, rank highly among the, the, the people's favourite period kung fu films, and um, and the second one in, especially has, has a, seems to have a more cohesive plot, and you actually get to see Wong Fei Hung doing other things besides his kung fu. You actually get to see his his skills as a man of medicine. I mean, even, even though the, the the third film and and the Once Upon a Time in China America are, um, are, are, are not quite in the same league as the first two, they're they're still worth having as part of this box set, and uh, there are far worse films out there than these. So anyway, that that pretty much wraps it up for this box set. I hope you, hope you enjoyed. Oh. What, what watching this and as I, I give this box set an overview. Ta ta for now.